Hello makers, welcome 3D Maker Noob. I'm Joe and today we're going to do something functional. Stick around. Welcome back makers. So as probably some of you know, I'm actually an avid board gamer. I love board games, I love card games, and I have a huge collection of them at this moment. Recently, a very, very good friend of mine has relocated to Malta and he opened a, um, a board game shop and a collectibles shop, which I've, I absolutely love. I have been buying a couple of board games from him. And one of those is this game called Smash Up right here. It's a very simple game. I, I won't get into it because this is not a board game channel, but it's a very simple game and it's a card game. The thing is that this game comes with what are called factions, which is a set of cards. And you have eight of them in a box. The box can house up to, I think about 20 factions. And the problem is the more expansion packs you buy, the more space you need. You can buy um, an extension or an expansion which houses all these cards, but it's made of cardboard. And I have 3D printers and I have some skill in Fusion 360. So what I want to do is instead of using this, which by the way, I've now run out of space and I have some extra ones, I've decided Okay, I'm going to design something which will hold the cards, uh, the cards nice and neatly in place and I can carry them around with me. Now, obviously, before you design something in Fusion 360, you need to have an idea of what you want. So the idea is actually very simple. I simply want a box, nothing too complicated, something very simple, but it has to have slots inside at an angle. So when, if you see it from the side, it will be something like this. So the cards can fit at an angle. So I can see which faction I am looking at. And it has to be at a size where it fits on any Prusa i3 style printer. So possibly around 18 centimeters in width and no more than 20 centimeters in length. Now the most important things to calculate are the size of a deck of cards and in terms of width it's about 6.7 centimeters including the sleeve because I like to take care of my cards so I put sleeves in them. So we'll do it slightly larger and we'll go with 70 millimeters. So if you look at it from the front the from here to here will be 70 millimeters. Now this right here, so the width or the depth of the deck will pretty much be around, well here it's about 11 millimeters. However, I want to put those at an angle. So let's say something about, it's, it's about 70 degrees, 65 or 70 degrees. And that comes to about 150 or 15 millimeters actually, not 150. So this will be 15 millimeters. The angle we'll see, we'll talk about 65, 70 degrees. And yeah, we can take it from there. So first thing we're going to do is obviously open Fusion 360 and we're going to create a sketch. And I, I think the easiest way for me to do this is start by designing the side rather than start from the bottom and work my way up. So I will uh, create a sketch that will represent one of the sides of the model and take it from there. So the first thing we're going to do is create a line. And we already said that the deck width is about um, 15 millimeters when it's slanting. So we'll start from there. Next up, what we're going to do is move the line upwards at the angle we spoke about. We said about 65, 70 degrees should be fine. And it kind of looks okay at 67.4, but um, yeah, I think 70 would be much better in this case. Yeah, I'm actually quite happy with that. So what I'm gonna do now is continue sketching um, and doing a parallel line from the one that I created. 
and we're going to set a space between decks and I think five millimeters should be fine. What I'm going to next is simply I'm going to repeat the process a few more times and see how many uh, decks we could fit in, um, in the length of the model. So looking at this sketch, this looks roughly possibly about 17, 18 centimeters long and we have about eight sections where we put factions on. So that's perfectly fine. What I want to do is the last bit of the edge, I need to do it slightly larger because I have to take into consideration that I want um, uh, this box to eventually close. So I need to make enough space for the upper half of the deck to be covered and not be basically leaning backwards far over the edge of the uh, container I'm doing. So once that's done, what I'm going to do is simply do the rest of the sketch and I'm going to close it off in a box. Now that would be the profile of the box. Now what I want to do is kind of like a lip all the way around the box and the reason for that is eventually I want to print the top part of the box so it can sort of close itself where I can cover the cards so I can keep them safe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create kind of like a box on the side of uh, five millimeters squared so um, I can use that as the lip and the overlapping part of the upper box that I will print. So once that is done we can see that the profile of the model is actually ready and it wasn't that complicated, it's just a matter of lines and angles. Once we've selected that profile, I'm just going to extrude it. Now we already said that the, uh, the width of a card is 70 millimeters. So we know that two decks will take 140 millimeters and we'll probably do one centimeter between the cards and one centimeter on each edge. Um, so it will be 170 uh, millimeters in total. And that is pretty much the, um, the main essential component. That's where the decks will fit. Now what I need to do is simply create a few more sketches and extrusion in order to build the central wall or divider which will divide the two decks on, on um, both sides and also the walls on the side. So I'm going to create a sketch on the bottom and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw lines on the side where I want the extrusions to happen. Now I have to take into consideration also those lips that I spoke about in order to create the upper part that will fit in. So I have to take those into consideration. Now once that is done, what I need to know is how high I need to extrude. And seeing that it was at an angle, I need to show the initial sketch and I want to see exactly how high the, um, I made the sketch from uh, the base to the top and it's 61.382 millimeters. So that is how much I need to extrude. So now that I know the height, I simply need to click on all the parts that I need to, um, I need to extrude upwards in order to bring up the walls. And we know that the height is 61.382. We're gonna switch on the body so we can see and that looks absolutely perfect. Now all I need to do is fix a few sketches or create a couple of sketches just so I can modify the sides in order to have that five millimeter squared lip all the way around the box. So it, it's much easier for me to simply just re-extrude everything as the, at the same size and work from top to bottom. So what I'm going to do now is simply create a sketch from the top in order to create that channel and extrude downwards into the model itself. Just to remove all the confusion, I'm just gonna switch off the bodies so I can see exactly what I'm doing. And once I've done the sketch, all I need to do is simply click on create and then extrude. I'm gonna switch on all the bodies just so I make sure I know what I'm doing. And I'm gonna set the height at minus five millimeter. Make sure the operation is cut, not join. And there we have it. 
that is pretty much it. Finally, all I need to do is simply select all the model or all the bodies, click on modify and then click on combine in order for it to become one solid piece. Now that actually looks just fine as it is, but we want to give it a nice custom touch. So what I did was I downloaded the smash up logo and what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert it as a canvas on the front of the box. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using splines to trace the outline of the letters in order to create a, um, an embossed effect of the letters or the art itself. So I can just give it a nice custom touch. Now, for those of you who have seen my um, Tigger video, um, you can actually refer to that to see exactly how you do this with the splines, but it's relatively easy. It's just a bit time consuming. There are easier ways to do it. But honestly speaking, I really enjoy myself doing this. Um, so uh, yeah, I went ahead and did all of it. So once it was finished, all I need to do is simply select the parts I need to, well, emboss, or in this case, I'm just gonna extrude slightly inwards. I'm gonna select the model, create, uh, click on create and then extrude, and move in just maybe a couple of millimeters, just enough for it to sort of pop out. Once that's done, I'm just gonna switch off the canvas so I can see how it looks, and that looks absolutely awesome. So what I'm gonna do now is throw it in, um, in Slicer, Prusa Slicer, and head off for printing. <music> And this is the result and it came absolutely awesome. I couldn't be happier. Now, before I show you this close up and you bite my head off, I need to explain a few things as to why this doesn't look as clean as it should be. So I tried to print this initially with PETG because seeing as I'll be moving around, I don't want the heat to do anything to it, but I tried it twice. And after about three or four layers, I noticed there was a bit of warping along the edges. Um, so I decided to scrap that. Then eventually I decided to print a couple of add-ons for the Prusa in order to stick my GoPro to the bed. So rather than give you a time-lapse of what you just saw where you just see the bed moving, it's actually fixed and you can see it much better. However, I couldn't find the right model to use. It kept hitting in certain places, it was complicated to fit. And the last one I tried actually required me to take a couple of screws from the bottom of the bed out in order to attach to the frame. What happened was I didn't like that. And when I took it back out, I forgot to attach the screws. So I highly messed up. And while it printed and it printed well, the result was that I had a lot of, a lot of uneven layers because obviously with the movement, it was simply just vibrating too much. And as a result, the layers weren't as clean as I wanted them to be. However, as an end result, this is exactly what I wanted. And now all I have to do is grab my factions, and throw them in. And seeing as the game has about, about five or six expansions, and I only have three of those, and put the dividers in, they fit absolutely perfectly. Now, all I need to do is design the top part so I can close it off in a box and I can carry it with me. And that is it. What do you guys think? I know the designing part of it wasn't possibly the most simple, but it only took me about half an hour. And most of the time, the, the, the part that took me the most was trying to figure out how I'm gonna work my way with 
sketches and extrusion from which part but I think moving from side to side and then the bottom and the top finally I think it worked out well in the end it might have not been the easiest I don't know but it worked and ultimately that's what I wanted something that works and it works beautifully so I am extremely extremely happy so please let me know what you guys think before I end this episode, I would like to thank Omar, my very, very, very good friend who owns Malta Geek Paradise. Um, it is a web shop with collectibles. They have memorabilia and board games, lots and lots of board games. Please go check his place out. Um, he does ship internationally, he has really good prices. This is not a paid episode by Malta Geek Paradise, but I'm actually an avid customer of his. Um, I buy a lot of board games, so I really want him to succeed in this venture. So please, please go check him out. That is it from me, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Please comment, like, share, subscribe, and as always, happy making, guys.